So, today I thought we'd start a new segment for, I guess, uh, photography and videography and I suppose filmmaking. So I'm actually going to be calling these segments 5 Minute Fridays. So I'm hoping we could cover quite a bit of a lesson within 5 minutes. So, since it is Friday today, let's actually start our first one and put 5 minutes on the clock. So, let's go. Alright, so my first recommendation if you're going to be doing filming or photography is to get a really, really good tripod. So here, I've got two. Each of these tripods is kind of meant for different things. And so if you're going to be doing photography specifically, um, what I'm doing most of the time is that I carry two for, well, obvious reasons, um, filming and doing photography at the same time. But what I also recommend people to get is to get different sizes and weight for each tripod. So thankfully, Tripods are one of those things that you buy, if you buy a really good one, it'll last you years on out. So you don't have to worry too much about that. But what you notice is that once you start placing your camera around in different positions, you'll be able to use different shots to your advantage or uh, positionings to take really good photos. Uh, some people just try to hold their camera steady, but that kind of limits you to the scope of the type of work you can do. So that's kind of what I always suggest for my first tip is to how to use their tripod very well. So tip two is I highly suggest people to get ND filters. So as you can see, ND filters are essentially a very simple way of essentially putting kind of a sunglasses on your lens. But specifically, I actually recommend variable ND filters because what you could do is you could actually adjust how much light you're actually letting into the lens. And so these essentially just clip onto your, you just essentially clip these onto your lens. And what's really nice about them is that it allows you to get different amount of exposure length. So for example, if you're gonna be doing a, a waterfall exposure and you're gonna be exposing for more than a few seconds, you can actually put one of these polarizers on or these filters on and it'll actually um, make the water look a little more creamy essentially. Or for example, if you just want to be shooting or doing video work in a really bright and sunny day, um, that's going to blow out the highlights. And so what you want is an, a variable ND filter to kind of block out some of the unnecessary light. All right. Tip three is I highly suggest people to learn Photoshop, you know, Adobe Lightroom or a Capture One, some sort of editing software very, very well. And learn it so you could give specific different tones or feel to the photos that you're really working with or let's say specifically if you're going to be doing let's say capturing winter photos as an example you kind of want to be working with colors that will really highlight the blues and the darker tones of an image right and the reason I suggest this is it's kind of part of the overall process of creating photos so Ansel Adams is a very famous example that he creates three books about creating a photo he has the camera he has the negative and he has the print. What that really translates into modern day technology is know your camera very well. Know the photo and the subject that you're trying to take very well. And then finally, know how to process the image very, very well. I typically try to um, get a very tonal feeling to the images I'm trying to convey. So again, back to the winter example, if I can't get a specific color render I want, sometimes I try to investigate how I could pull certain colors and play by taking away certain colors in the image, right? So I highly suggest learning a specific software very, very well. This next tip I highly recommend for people uh, wanting to get into photography or videography is that in order to capture really good and interesting places, you have to go to interesting places. What's really fascinating for me as a travel photographer is I try to convey the joy and the trip that I'm actually going on. If I'm going to, let's say, Colorado, and I wanna be doing a lot of outdoor photography for Colorado, I really wanna get a good exploration from beginning to end and showcase certain areas that people probably won't see. So if I'm gonna be taking photos of the Rocky Mountains, I try to go to specific spots that probably aren't as common in the Rocky Mountains and try to get really good photos there and be very, a little different, if you will, from different people. I think that message will kind of convey a more interesting photo. And the last tip I, I suggest for people if they want to learn photography, videography very well is to learn from other people or learn from different resources. So as an example, I'm learning a lot of portraits and 
interview style headshots. But unfortunately, that's not really my area of expertise. So what I actually do is I actually reached out to a friend of mine. She does a lot of portraits. And thankfully, she was able to teach me a couple things and she's kind of pushing me to experiment a little bit, which I really like. Cause it's more her style that she's kind of teaching me. She works a lot with natural light. So she works a lot with golden hour, blue hour, kind of areas that I'm not very familiar with when it comes to taking portraits of people. I really like that. So I experiment a lot with this sort of subject. So, so I encourage people is to experiment with something that they're not familiar with to actually improve their photography quite a bit or their video. As another example, if you don't have a friend who could teach you, you could watch YouTube videos, you could read books, you could take courses, you could take workshops. There's a lot of different resources out there for you to learn and improve with your photography. So if you wanna not, let's say you don't wanna do portrait works and you wanna do more, let's say car photography, right? I would start digging into the subject and seeing what kind of artists that you could learn from that you really like and try to emulate their style a little bit. Those are kind of my five tips that I encourage people if you're learning photography or videography to kind of pursue, really. Good lessons within five minutes, so. All right, well until then, we'll talk later. Bye guys.